liquids uh, will tend to vaporize from the surface if uh, the particles uh, at that surface have sufficient kinetic energy. So the higher kinetic energy particles at the surface might be able to vaporize, and that is called evaporation, whereas vaporization from throughout the liquid, not just at the surface, would be called boiling, where you're forming bubbles. So uh, let's draw out uh, the description then uh, of vapor pressure. Um, by the way, vapor uh, is uh, a gas which normally at room temperature is a liquid or solid. Okay, uh, so consider a case in which uh, you put frozen water into a container uh, with no water in it. Let that water uh, melt and soon it is going to be at a, about 25 degrees Celsius, say. It, soon it will be liquid. Now uh, consider then that uh, that water, uh, some of the particles at its surface have that high enough kinetic energy that they're able to uh, shake free from uh, the hydrogen bonds uh, and dipole-dipole interactions holding them uh, towards other water molecules. Uh, they have a high enough kinetic energy to break uh, those intermolecular attractions so that they soon break out into the uh, vapor phase, uh, or actually gas phase. They, they turn into vapor by evaporating. Now consider then then at a given moment, uh, you might uh, have three water particles uh, in this demonstration vaporizing. Um, what happens then to uh, the number of gaseous water particles uh, over a little bit of time, over the next moment? Well, considering then we, that, we had, that we had three water particles vaporized, but no water particles were in the gas phase, none uh, will condense. So in the next moment, however, uh, having the same temperature as before and having the same surface area of contact between uh, the liquid uh, and, the, and, and the gas, uh, there will still be three vaporizations. But having more water particles in the gas phase and being that they uh, will uh, move about and sometimes collide with the liquid and rejoin it, uh, there might be now perhaps one condensation. Uh, so in this uh, step we have three uh, vaporizations and one condensation, uh, three ups and one down. What happens to the number of, of gaseous water particles by the next moment? If uh, we had three water particles and then we had three more join it and then we lost one, uh, there was a net change in two, soon there will be a total of five water particles. Now, uh, there's still going to be the same number of three water particles vaporizing, still the same rate of vaporization given the same temperature and and surface area of the liquid to the gas. But having now more of these water particles, instead of having three, we now have five water particles in the gas phase, we might have a higher rate of condensation. Uh, perhaps having about twice as many water particles in the gas phase, we might have about twice as many condensations as before. And so now we have two condensations. You see that uh, over time, uh, over time, uh, the rate of, uh, of vaporization is not changing. Okay, so our rate of vaporization is not changing, but our rate of condensation is actually increasing over time. Uh, it's increasing because there are an increasing number of particles in the gas phase. Uh, we went from one, con one condensation to two. Give it a couple more moments and eventually perhaps you've gotten to the point where you have nine uh, water particles in the gas phase. Now you still have three vaporizations, but now having three times as many water particles in the gas phase, in, as in uh, this case, uh, we should have now three times as many condensations as in this case as well. And so uh, we've reached this point where we have now an equal number of uh, vaporizations as condensations. We have an equal number of ups and downs in this given moment, or we have equal rates. Now having these equal rates of up and down, we are said to be at now a point of dynamic equilibrium where uh, we have equal rates in the forward and reverse directions. These reactions or processes are still occurring. However, uh, you can see that the concentrations and pressures of our reactants and products will be no longer changing at, uh, at unchanged conditions at unchanged conditions. So for example, uh, you can see up here that 
uh, having uh, having three ups and three downs, there should be uh, as many water particles in the gas phase as at the previous moment. We see that uh, this uh, having nine water particles in the gas phase will go on indefinitely as long as uh, we have not changed conditions, particularly by changing the temperature or perhaps by opening the container. This can go on for uh, many, many years, thousands, even, even longer if the conditions do not change. Uh, now, uh, what if, uh, what if uh, the temperature were to increase, though? Uh, how would this change uh, our pressures, uh, our vapor pressure here, actually? Well, increasing the temperature uh, is going to affect the rate of vaporization. Previously, uh, there were three uh, vaporizations at a given moment, but now there might be nine. Uh, the reason is uh, that um, a greater proportion of our particles will have the certain minimum kinetic energy at that surface in order to vaporize. So you can see in our, in our blue uh, case here, this is at a low temp in a graph of the number of particles versus their kinetic energy, where some particles have a low kinetic energy, some particles have a high kinetic energy, and a lot of particles have a, me a medium amount of kinetic energy. And, uh, and there's a certain minimum kinetic energy needed in order to vaporize. We can see that uh, highlighted in green here. There's a small proportion of all of our particles here which are able to vaporize. They have that minimum kinetic energy. But having a high temperature, uh, this will shift uh, our curve of kinetic energy um, of our particles. You see that it shifts to the right. More uh, particles have higher kinetic energies. Uh, and so uh, then the proportion of our particles, the fraction of all of these particles that are highlighted in yellow here, are, uh, is higher uh, for those that will have that minimum kinetic energy. So uh, we can see then that by uh, increasing the temperature, we increase the rate uh, of vaporization. We've gone from three vaporizations to nine just by increasing the temperature. Now, uh, having this case, uh, then we might have more vaporizations and condensation, being that condensation is not particularly affected by rate. Um, and so uh, give it a little bit of time and eventually you'll get to a point where uh, you'll have a buildup of, of, of water particles in the gas phase, the vapor pressure of water, to the point now where we have as many uh, ups as downs. We've again reached a point of equilibrium. However, we can see here that uh, we had at a low temperature at equilibrium, we had only nine water particles in the gas phase, but now having a high temperature, we have 27. We can see that by increasing the temperature, we increase the number of gas particles uh, in, in, or, or water particles in the gas phase. By increasing the temperature, we see that we've increased the vapor pressure of that liquid, uh, which is related to the number of uh, those particles, which are gaseous. Uh, they are vapor. Now, vapor pressure uh, is uh, the pressure from the vapor at equilibrium. It does not depend on the amount of liquid uh, at the bottom as long as there is an excess or, uh, or on the volume of the container as well. Um, now, this does depend on uh, what uh, the liquid is and what uh, the temperature is, as we'll see in uh, the next boiling point video. Now, uh, just going a little further, what if we were to change the conditions in another way for the for this case, where uh, we had a closed container, a, a sealed container, but now uh, we remove the top. Okay, so we open the container. By doing that, those water particles, instead of just continually condensing and vaporizing at the same rate, those water particles are now going to spread out into the rest of the room. And so uh, this means that they'll collide with the liquid phase less often than before, and so uh, the condensation rate will be less than before. And uh, there cannot be a significant buildup now uh, in, in water particles above the liquid because when they start building up, they spread out again back into the room. And so having a higher rate of vaporization than condensation uh, and having this continually occur, uh, this will eventually uh, make all of this water vaporize. So uh, perhaps you take uh, a shower in the morning. Uh, if you were to completely seal off uh, your, your shower cell, the water would remain there uh, indefinitely, but having it opened up, uh, the water can vaporize more quickly. Um, all right, thanks for watching, guys.